Hey, what is up, church? Thank you so much for being with us today. We are going to talk about everyone's favorite topic. We are talking about lust. Now, I say that in a joking way because, honestly, this is a topic that we do not like to talk about. It's one of those that we kind of want to ignore. We don't want to pretend that we struggle with. But the truth is, man, we are under attack with lust. No matter where you look, man, lust is there through our TV shows. Man, we have access to stuff on our cell phones. I heard this the other day. Somebody said that a 13-year-old boy has more access to nudity than any king in human history. Man, that is, that is astounding. And the reality is this, that, man, we are under attack. So we have to know, how do we guard ourselves from lust? So let's get into our scripture, and then we'll get right into the content. It says this. This is 2 Timothy 2.22. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call the Lord with pure hearts. So the first thing is this, what is lust? You know, a lot of times when we think of lust, we think of it in a sexual sense. But the truth is, lust, we can lust after multiple things. We can lust after money. We can lust after objects. The thing is, lust is an intense desire to have something. And what happens is, we have these natural desires. You know, it's normal for a man to look at a woman and notice that she's beautiful. You know, when I look at uh, Chelsea, man, I see her, I mean, I say like, man, she is beautiful. Man, I wanna spend some cuddle time with her. That's a natural desire that God has placed inside of me. The problem is the enemy has come in and our fallen sinful nature takes it and distorts our view and our sexuality to make us long for something that we don't necessarily need to have. And so when we look at this, the problem with, with lust is that it leads us somewhere. It leads us into danger. I was thinking about this and I was looking throughout the Bible and three characters really stood out to me. The first one is Samson. You know, Samson was the strongest man in the Bible. David was the most spiritual man in the Bible. And Solomon was the wisest man in the Bible. So you have the strongest, the most spiritual, and the wisest. You know the one thing they all have in common? They all battled with lust. And the problem is they all gave into it at some point in their life, and it caused pain, it caused destruction. And so when we, when we don't check these things, what ends up happening is it leads us in a path and it leads us into danger. And so, you know, what are the different things and what are the different ways we can struggle with this? Well, the one and the most, what most people think about is pornography. And pornography is something that when it comes into our life, man, it can be something that's super dangerous for us. It is something that can reshape our brain and, and reshape the way that we think, way, rearrange the way that we view the opposite sex. The other one is maybe you know having inappropriate relationships uh, with the people around us. Maybe you're, you're co-workers, you kind of get emotionally involved, you get a little bit too close, you begin to have this intimacy, and then those thoughts and those, those things, man, they begin to come into your mind, and next thing you know, you're daydreaming about, man, I wonder what it would be like to be with this person, or, or maybe it would, it would be this, and, and man, my life would be so much better if I could be with her. The thing is, man, these are all so dangerous things. So, so what do we do with this? I want to give you a couple things uh, when it comes to this. The first is this, recognize that you're not alone. Like I just mentioned, some of the most powerful and greatest men in the Bible all struggled with this topic. You know, if you struggle with lust and this is something, man, that you felt conviction about and that you've been wrestling with, I want you to know you're not alone in this battle. It is something that we all deal with. You know, it's something that we don't like to talk about because we like to kind of keep it a secret. Or it's something that we like to elevate above other sins. But the truth is, this is just like a sin like any other. And the thing is, we need to recognize that, hey, God doesn't want us to live in lust. And also, God's not sitting there disappointed with you if you struggle with lust. The truth is that God wants to partner alongside you and help bring you through this process. So how do we overcome this? How do we overcome this battle if you're with, struggling with lust, if you're struggling with pornography, or maybe you've kind of emotionally got involved with someone and you're having an inappropriate relationship? What do you do? Uh, the first thing is this, it's, it's what are you viewing, what are you thinking about? We have to limit what's coming in the intake. So what's coming through your eyes? What are you seeing? What are you thinking about? So maybe it's a Netflix show that has nudity in it. 
Man, and, and, and whenever you watch that show, it leads you to looking at pornography. Maybe it's it's social media, you're scrolling through and you're seeing someone in a bathing suit and all of a sudden you're triggered and it leads you down a dark path. Or maybe it's one of those deals where you're getting some type of um, emotional fulfillment by talking to someone and being close to someone that you don't need to be that with. What you have to do is you have to set boundaries in your life. You have to say, okay, I don't maybe not need to watch that show. Maybe I need to distance myself from that person. The second thing is put up some boundaries. You know, our devices, it's one of those things, we live in technology where we're never gonna be able to escape lust. But the truth is we can be wise and we can put boundaries in place to help us and safeguard us from falling into lust all the time. So your cell phone, man, put some filters up on your phone. I have filters on my phone because the thing is I want a, you know, the same way that you would put a fence in place to protect your house from being robbed. It's the same way with lust. Man, I'm going to put a fence up. I'm going to put a boundary up to keep this from just getting in any time that it wants. Um, the other thing that you may want to do is find some accountability. Man, find a buddy, find a friend, find a mentor, find somebody else who has dealt with this or walked through this that you can talk to and you can be open and transparent with about your struggles. And just, man, set up a text conversation. Hey, man, I'm having a rough time today. I'm struggling today. Can you pray for me? Hey, can we go grab some coffee? Man, I'm, my mind has just been, uh, just been ravaged with all of these things. I need some help. And lastly, counseling. Man, you know, if you have a pornography addiction or some type of sexual addiction, man, these things don't often just fall off of us in one prayer. What I want you to understand is this is, this is not just a singular battle. This is a war for our minds. You know, lust, man, it attacks our minds so much. And so what you'll find, it is not a singular battle, but it is a bunch of little daily battles that are fighting a greater war for our minds. And so when it comes to getting help, man, getting a counselor, getting someone that you can talk to and that you can be real with and walk through this process with. And the last thing I want to tell you is this, do not give up. Wherever you are in this battle, man, maybe you've just been, for years you've been addicted to pornography and you have all this stuff going on and you just can't break free of it, do not give up. The only time we lose in this life is when we give up. Here's what I want you to know. God is for you and God is with you. And God will see you through this process. God does not want to leave you in lust. man. He wants to leave you with his love. He wants to move you forward and help you renew your mind and bring transformation in your life. Thank you so much for being with us today, church. I hope this has been a word of encouragement. We love you so much. Hope to see you back next week. 